Hi everyone! Today, I wanted to run through a short list of uh, what I consider to be pretty underrated matte foundations that I have tried. It's not a full list of all the underrated foundations, it is also very much based on what I have personally tried and reviewed to date. So before you go off on a tangent, let me just remind you, this is not the most comprehensive list in the world. These are just the ones in my current collection that I feel are really, really good, but not getting the buzz or the kind of love that I feel that they deserve. Do remember that this is also based on my skin and the environment that I'm in. I have sort of normal dry skin for the most part, but I do have some combination areas, slightly oilier areas around my nostrils and my nose. And uh, I do live in a very, very hot and very humid place where we are sweating quite a lot through the day. So matte foundations are something that even women with slightly drier skins will sometimes choose to wear simply because we need that long wear and we need the texture proof sort of coverage that matte foundations give. And please remember again, this is just a short list of foundations that I feel are underrated. They are not like all my favorite matte foundations. There are a lot of matte foundations that get a lot of buzz and are good. Those are not included in this list, so please don't come in with comments like, but don't you like XYZ? Don't you like ABC? Yes, I like those, but they're not underrated, so they're not in this list, okay? The first matte foundation that I feel is a little bit underrated right now is Colorstay Full Cover Foundation. This is a drugstore one and I was testing this against the Sephora Matte Perfection Foundation the other day. I have the full review, wear test, blot test, everything um, in another video. I will link it below in the description box. This is something that really really grew on me. I wasn't impressed with the shade selection. Even this one, my closest match to 1-0 Sand Beige. This is slightly grey looking on me. It does warm up a little as it sets and um, changes colour on your skin a little bit. A lot of matte foundations do that. So this still sits alright on my skin tone, but I do kind of have to go in with bronzer and everything just to make sure that it's not too ashy looking. This is 3390 here in Singapore. Even regular Revlon foundation for us costs $40 sing. That is close to $30 US. Would you buy a Revlon foundation that costs you $30 in the drugstore? think so. So the issue with this is there are so many options in the market these days that um, you kind of you know have no reason to be paying 30 40 bucks for a drugstore foundation when you can hop over to Sephora and get things slightly cheaper or top up a little bit of money and get a higher end foundation from brands like Tarte. Uh, this is sitting very uncomfortably in the middle pricing tier. Now if you've used regular color stay and that is pretty high coverage and very very buildable. You would expect something that has the words full cover on it to be even more pigmented than regular color stay and this just is not that. I would say it's medium coverage at best. You can build it up to a slightly full coverage but it does not come full coverage. You kind of overlook the fact that this is very very fresh looking on the skin. It stays very fresh. It doesn't emphasize any pores or texture. It actually masks and blurs them a little bit and after it sets, the color for me does not oxidize. And this is one of the few foundations that is not full full cover but didn't fade at all in my oilier zones throughout the day. So at the start of the day, I put it on, I cover my redness. At the end of the day, around the most oily areas of my face, maybe there's a tiny bit of fading but most of it is intact. So this is one that I can trust to look pretty much exactly the same at the end of the day as it did at the start. The second foundation is also an affordable one and it's not going to be a surprise for you if you watch my foundation face off. I liked it equally and that is Sephora's Matte Perfection Foundation. Now this launched actually quite a while ago, um, at least one or two years by now, but I don't actually see a lot of people pay attention to this, which is a shame because for something that costs 25 bucks in Singapore, cheaper than a lot of drugstore foundations. This performs like a higher-end foundation. It is 
very high coverage, it is very very silky, the pigments are very fine grained and it doesn't sit on top of the skin like a mask when you apply it, given how much coverage it has. The one thing I would advise not to do if you have fine lines, wrinkles and all that around your eyes is to not take the foundation all the way up to the under eye area and the outer corners of your eyes. Because it is so full coverage, if you layer this under more concealer and then powder, it is a little bit more likely to emphasize lines and wrinkles around the eye area. Other than this one minor thing which can get around easily, this does deliver on the full coverage and long lasting clay. It doesn't stay quite as perfect looking for as long a period of time as the Revlon full cover I have to say. This one, I don't know how it managed to do it, it's magic. but. It does last for a decent amount of time and looks very, very perfected. If you want to look really beat and really flawless for a few hours, you know, for a night out, for a special event and all that, go for this. It is a beautiful, beautiful formula for $25. Oh, it also doesn't oxidize by the way. Like most matte foundations, it looks lighter while it's wet and then after you rub it in and let it dry down, it will set to its correct tone. So definitely swatch and test uh, on your jaw, on your neck or on the back of your hand. Make sure you see the shade about one minute after it dries down before you choose one and pay for it. The third one is a little bit of an old timer for me. I've been using it for a few years now and I always go back to it. I'm sorry for those who are in countries that don't really carry many products in the LeBlanc range, but this is a Chanel foundation and it is called LeBlanc Light Revealing Whitening Fluid Foundation. This is a very um, Asian market targeted product. It's supposed to contain the same brightening skincare ingredients uh, and also supplements very well. The skincare routines for women who are using the LeBlanc range. Regardless of the name, I don't consider this um, a serum foundation or a skincare foundation or a brightening foundation in any sense. To me, this is just a really, really nice medium-high coverage foundation that you can build up to full coverage. It has a very beautiful natural matte finish. It is not too flat, it's not powdery looking. It really masks things like pores and unevenness. And after it dries down, this is also another one that does not oxidize or change color throughout the day. It doesn't go dull, it doesn't go orange. This along with the Revlon Full Cover are two of the foundations that I've found do not seem to break down even when I get oily or I've been sweating a lot throughout the day. All I need to do if I have a long day and I need to go out for uh, dinner or drinks after work is blot off the shine and it looks as fresh as it did in the morning. I don't know what it is about this one, but it is designed not to darken over the day because you know if you're an East Asian and you're looking for a foundation in the LeBlanc range, you probably want your skin to look pretty bright. So that is definitely one of the key things that this foundation delivers on. It stays very color true, it gives very good coverage through the day. The obvious problem with this foundation is that it is not marketed as a matte, high coverage, long wear foundation. Personally, when it comes to Chanel matte foundations, um, I would go for this over any of the Perfection Lumiers anytime because this does include skincare properties as well. You know, when it comes to foundations that also include skincare ingredients in there, the only question for me is like, why not? Speaking of skincare properties, this fourth foundation I'm going to talk about is one that contains a ton of skincare properties and that is It Cosmetics CC Plus Oil Free Matte. I've used the original CC Plus for years and I really love that one. Uh, I've turned my mom onto it, she's turned all her friends onto it, tons of people around me are using this right now. But when this came out, this formula, it just made more sense for me as someone who is wearing this on longer days. I would wear this to the office, I would wear this for a whole day out. If you've not tried this before, I will just come right out and tell you it is not full coverage, it is not even fully matte. This is more of a satin formula or semi-matte at best. You will get a little bit of a glow on your face because it is very moisturizing even for an oil-free matte formula. It is very hydrating. The reason I consider it quite underrated is because it is a fantastic skincare supplement that also has coverage at the same time. This contains a lot of antioxidants and plant extracts, conditioners. It also contains niacinamide to keep skin very calm and soothe inflammation. So if you have an active breakout or anything like that, this can actually help 
keep your skin a little bit less red, a little bit less sore. It also contains salicylic acid to help you unclog your pores or keep your pores a little bit clearer through the day, even as it covers things up. This gets a lot of use from me, particularly on super super hot days that I know I'm going to be out, I'm going to be perspiring all day, I'm going to be sweating, I'm going to get oily all day and I'm beyond caring about my makeup staying flawless. I just want to make sure I don't break out in the next day. Then I reach for this, you know, over this. The fifth foundation that I'm going to be talking about is also one that claims to be hydrating and that is Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Foundation. This dries down beautifully on the skin. It has minimal texture for the amount of coverage that it gives. It does not emphasize any lines or pores, but it also does not look powdery matte or fake looking. It looks like clean skin, that kind of a matte. So there is still a little bit of a luminosity, a texture and a life to the skin after you put this on, which is one of the reasons that I really, really, really like it. Now I feel the words hydrating foundation actually turn off a lot of oily skin guys and girls, when actually this would probably sit quite comfortably on oily and combination skins. It does feel dry to the touch. It will not feel sticky, it will not feel tacky, it will not look greasy at all on the skin. So if you are looking for a nice medium coverage matte foundation that still looks skin-like, if you don't have too much texture problems and you just want something that's going to stay flawless and hold on to your skin but look good up close, this is a very very nice formulation and I don't think it gets a ton of buzz anywhere. Now the sixth one is a little bit of a controversial one and that is Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation from Hourglass. You guys know I love this, I've used it many 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 times, I used it in several videos and I've never had a problem with this but I do know that some people find it a little bit difficult to use or inconsistent on the skin. They are expecting full coverage matte long wear because of the 24 hour claim. I think Hourglass would have done a little bit better not to make that 24 hour claim because there are a lot of factors that affect the lasting power of a foundation like this one. I would describe this as a liquid ink foundation, meaning it has a very very light fluid texture but a ton of pigmentation in that one little drop. So you should use a minimal amount of this and then add more if you need it. Don't go in with a full pump, swipe it on, and then wonder why it looks cakey or thick or unnatural on your skin. This is not meant to be caked on. Tip from me, the less you apply, the better this performs on the skin. I find the main weakness of this foundation is the fact that it is quite easily affected by what skincare or primer you have on underneath. So I like to use this with a very lightweight moisturizer. Something that's not going to cause the skin surface to be very slippery and too moist. So despite all the 24 hour, you know, waterproof, uh, smudge resistant, transfer resistant claims, the fact is, if you apply a very very thick primer on the surface of your skin, something very slippery like, you know, if you applied a very thick layer of Tatcha silk canvas and you didn't blend it out, you didn't shear it out, or you're wearing very very rich moisturizer and sunblock on the day and the surface of your skin is kind of slippery and overly moist, then this does not dry down and set properly. When I use this with very fresh, um, fast absorbing, oil-free skincare, this lasts the whole day and it looks perfect even at the end of the day through sweating, grime, being out in the heat and everything. Hourglass does say that this has primer inbuilt so you do not need a separate primer with this unless you have extremely dry or extremely oily skin. I have mentioned this before. So don't just go in with layers and layers of products just because. Sometimes you just don't need it and certain products work better without all those unnecessary extras. Of course, if you consider the fact that this costs a ton of money, it should be slightly easier to use, but for all its problems and the lack of education around this product, I still consider this one of my favourites and an underrated foundation, simply because if you use it the right way, you can get such amazing, amazing results with this. Now this last brand is one that's generally not very well known outside of Japan. Even in Singapore, while they're available here now, they are available in very limited places. So a couple of Japanese department stores and drugstores. 
and it is Sofina. Now Sofina has a few brands under their umbrella, um, quite a lot of skincare, their main focus is skincare, but they do have the Prima Vista line which focuses on um, base products. So you have a matte foundation like this one, you have a powder foundation, you have a loose setting powder which I love by the way. Now, regardless of K-beauty influence and the preference for glowy, dewy foundations these days, I find in general a lot of the Japanese consumers still prefer very matte very airbrushed, very perfected looking skin finish. And the expectations for matte foundation formulas is set so high there that even random drugstore brands will tend to have amazing matte formulations. Prima Vista Ange Liquid Foundation Long Keep is very typical of Japanese drugstore matte liquid foundation. It is very lightweight, it has this super silky, silicone feel when you are blending it on and then it sets to this velvet finish and then it stays beautiful on the skin, dry touch, textureless, poreless looking. You may be able to skip powder sometimes if you're using this because it just doesn't feel tacky on the skin at all. It has light medium coverage, you can build it up a little to medium high coverage but it is not full coverage. It's very natural looking, very clean looking on the skin, it blurs pores, blurs texture. It is just one of the best in class and it is, I believe, either this or the matte powder foundation um, is a top seller in Japan and this is one of the most popular and best foundations that you can try if you are currently curious to try um, Asian matte foundations. This is in my underrated matte foundation lineup because one, not a lot of people know about the brand yet, which is a pity, two, it is relatively inexpensive, and three, this does remind me very, very much of Chanel's Perfection Linear Velvet. It has that sort of a lightweight, silky texture, that kind of medium pigmentation that goes on and looks like second skin. It has that buildability, that breathability, the weightlessness. So I think this is a very... Sorry, got too excited. As I was saying, this is a beautiful formula for the price. It is fantastic for humid weather. Uh, it is great for combination and oily skins. It does not have a ton of coverage, but it looks very good on the skin. You can always go on with concealer where you need, so you don't necessarily need full, full coverage with your foundation. The main problem for this foundation, as with many East Asian makeup lines, is the shade selection. I am using OC05 and it is either the deepest or the second deepest shade available. So if you have medium to tan or deeper skins, you would have a problem finding a match in this range. And that is a reason why I don't really shout about this foundation as much as I really want to. But if you can find a shade match, definitely, definitely go check this out. So that is my lineup, my seven beautiful little dwarves, matte foundations that I find to be underrated for various different reasons by consumers in the market right now. If you've checked out any of these, let me know if you love them or you dislike them and what the reasons are. If you have recommendations for matte foundations that you feel deserve a little bit more love, tell me in the comments below, I want to know. As usual, if you liked the video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.